everyone, this is just a couple painting, a printing tips. Since I started printing a lot, I thought, you know, you might, might have a couple issues when you print here and there. So I thought I would show you a couple. Uh, first of all, uh, when you add your ink with your paintbrush to your piece and you set it down to print, um, don't let it sit there too long. If you let that dry, when you try to peel it, this is probably going to rip and your paper drip rips for sure. So, you know, when you ink it and you lay it down, go ahead and lay it down and lift it back up. Do not let it sit there, especially overnight, but even five minutes of it just sitting there, it'll get stuck to it and it'll rip. So please don't do that. Also, um, as I was printing, I realized I need a lot of sheets of paper. So um, I would encourage you to, I'm using the small print. So um, I would encourage you to rip the paper in four. You're, the one that you rub on top with, rip a bunch of sheets. You literally need almost one per stamp. So a small one, if you do small stamps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You need at least 16 little pieces of paper to do one of these um, small ones. So rip, rip these ahead of time because they're easier if you use them. Even if you go and rip, rip again in half, like this, if you rip it into a bunch of pieces, they're big enough to just lay on top and rub. This is probably what you want because sometimes the extra will get your paper dirty. So get and rip them pretty even size to what you need and have them all ahead of time. And remember, don't let it stick. Also, I wanted to tell you that um, our paper is slightly bigger than these. So you're going to end up with areas where it doesn't reach at the very end. And I don't like that as much. So um, when I was printing, I printed a couple extra just pieces. And when I put the ink on that, you got to remember that you flip it over to ink. So I only inked this side and then just print it there. I had an extra sheet of paper. Let me move that over so you can actually see. I had an extra sheet of paper down here at the bottom like this. And I inked only here and then I stamped it. And that's how I got all my edges that you'll see in my drawing in a second. So think about that. Also, if you choose to make any letters, they have to be backwards. Um, and it doesn't matter either. Like if you make a letter R, you would have to make it like this right here so it could print correctly. But if you make something like that, letters and numbers, then you could always, you know, make it regular, cut it out, and then just make sure you ink the opposite side so that when you flip it, it flips right. So that's that. Um, the tape, when you ink, it barely shows. So I would encourage you to grab your tape. Sorry, I didn't have my tape with me. I would encourage you to grab the tape on these, line it up, go ahead and tape it. And I would encourage you to tape both sides. This, you have, when you have acrylic in it, it won't even show that much. So you're okay. I would encourage you to tape both sides so that it's nice and strong when you go ahead and print. Um, what else was I going to tell you? Painting, applying ink to these things. I want you to have fun when you apply the ink. You can go, is that okay? Yes, you can go totally basic and just apply one color to your, your stuff. Or you can go two colors or even three and make them fade into each other. And yes, your hands are going to get a little dirty. That's why we always use a separate sheet of paper to put our ink on. And then, you know, we'll have these little things like before where we would, you know, put this on our actual artwork and put this on top. I tried it without a little sheet and just with my hands and it got super messy and it didn't print as nice. So then, you know how this gets messy? This is trash now, so don't use it again. Remember, do not let it sit there. It's going to stick and it's going to rip. And there's your inking. And I did it real quick, but um, go ahead and do that. Whenever you do stuff, you can blotch it, little blotches of paint, and do that as well and get a design. You can paint and move your brush around. And those strokes with the two different colors where you go like that, that'll actually print. You can get half a paint. So like this brush, I put half red, half black. You can literally go like that on your cherries and that's the way it'll print. So have fun with your paints as well. Okay, so that's it about printing.
I want to show you what I did with my printing. I um, This is the one that I started yesterday, um, in the video you saw yesterday. And um, so I went ahead and printed. I would do an extra piece here. And I would probably do an extra piece there so that it looks more finished. But that's how I divided it. I used the negative of the spoon here. But I used the positive of the cherries. I also made this one just to show you that you can be real different if you want to. Let me angle that better. So this one, I used the two positives of the cherries and the spoon without any of the negatives. I did only positives and I went all kind of random. So it gave me this beautiful pattern that I'm going to draw on top. So there's that one. And then I also did this one where I combined the two styles. Now this one already has drawing on it, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, so I'm going to leave it like this. Here are the negatives on my border. But then I did the positive cherries with negative spoons. So get as creative as you want because you have all these multiple pieces to work with. And if you're working this little, you're going to have half a sheet left over that if you mess up, um, you can cut more. And this is what I mean with that. You have a full sheet, right? When you cut it in half, you end up with two small pieces. And that's all I use for this whole project. So that means I have this extra. So if I need more, or if I mess up my cutting, I have this extra piece. If you decide to go with the big printing, then you're going to use up your whole sheet with that design. So be very careful and don't mess up on your cutting because this is all you have. They sell more foam at Hobby Lobby if you and Walmart as well. If you want to go buy some, you can order an Amazon. It's a huge pack. It's real cheap. But, um, you know, just think about it when you're cutting so that you don't mess up your stuff. Okay, so now that you've finished printing, now that you saw the tips and tricks of printing, um, you're going to start drawing. So here are the steps for drawing. You let this completely dry. You find an image that you like. And mine is all about ice cream and sundaes and just having really what I like. So um, on here, I would make a banana split because it's kind of long and I'm going to go along with my banana split. So after this dries, I start sketching my drawing. And I went ahead and sketched it on this one just to show you that I went online and this is a banana, I'm sorry, this is a chocolate brownie sundae. So I went ahead and sketched it. I hope you can see that. But I sketched it with pencil. And after you sketch it with pencil, you're going to start coloring with colored pencils. I want to show you a couple tricks of coloring with colored pencil real quick. So let me pause the camera and I'm going to zoom into this chocolate just so you can see how I'm actually getting some of this fine, fine detail. And also, my cherries were super bright red and I didn't want that super bright red. So what I did is I grabbed um, white paint and I put a little bit of water in it just to make it thin. And I painted my ice cream area and I painted the whipped cream and I painted the glass area where the red was so that it could mute down the red and I can still color on top. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to say it again. I grabbed white paint with a little bit of water in it. I mixed it up to make thin paint and I painted my areas that were too dark to make my whites pop. Um, I also grabbed pure white paint on my drawing right here. And I added a couple little white little dots and different stuff to bring some of my detail out. So it's okay to mix a little paint on top of your drawing if you want to later on. There's just some tips and tricks to make them look a little bit more interesting. All right, let me get this zoomed in so I can show you some drawing tips. Give me just a second. So this is how I made my fudge. I used all these colors right here. And I used, if you think that the chocolate fudge is only brown, then you have, a, then you need to really look at layering. Remember back to our drawing boot camp, how Coach Clark showed you how to layer all these colors to get rich stuff. This is how you get this. So I filled with this color right here, I filled my whole, except for the highlights, my whole chocolate fudge with this color right here. Okay, the whole thing. Then I went and grabbed the second darker one and I went ahead and filled the whole thing and I got close to my highlights, but not really. I got a little bit of away from them to create that fade and I filled the whole thing with this color. Then I grabbed my dark actual fudge color and I added that right on top where it goes and I colored almost my whole thing, especially where it was really dark, but not my highlights again 
okay? Then I grabbed my white and I colored inside my highlights. And you can see them on the image, they would be really white. And then I grabbed my black and I colored lightly on top of my brown to give it the shades that it has. I love to mix colors that are unexpected and it gives your drawing such a richness to it. So I grab this dark blue and I put it in the shadows of this fudge just to make it different. Um, if you look closely, all the blues and the violets that I added, I hope, I don't think that zooms in well, I'm sorry. They're all right here in these shadows. And that's what makes this fudge look so real. I'm gonna do the same thing to a cherry in a second. Um, I did the same thing for the ice cream. I drew the ice cream. I drew it with gray, with light brown, with this tannish color, and then with white color pencil all over the top. So I added all these little wrinkles from, you know, when they scoop it, I added it with these colors. And then I added this color on the whole thing so it wouldn't be like stark white. And then I toned the whole thing down with my white on the whole thing. So think about stuff like that. I really want you to notice my lines on my glass cup right here. Notice how it's blue and then nothing and then gray and then black and then blue, then black, then blue, then gray, then white line, then blue. So it's a broken line that's going to, in the switching of the back and forth, it's going to create that. Um, I want you to see how my chocolate swirl that's inside my sundae, I didn't draw it all the way to the edges because this is where the glass reflects. Don't draw what you think it should be there. Draw what you see, and you're going to get something real realistic. Um, I want just to draw down here real quick because I haven't done so. So I'm going to start with my gray right here, and I'm going to press a little hard and do a broken line, and then I'm going to press extremely light and make that fade out. I'm going to grab some of my white and go right on top and make that blend out. I'm going to grab some black. I'm sorry. There we go. And I'm going to add a little bit broken line of the black. I'm going to add some more white in there. I'm going to grab some gray. And I'm going to kind of fade it out. I'm going to grab a few browns, like the dark brown. And I'm going to add a couple here. I'm bringing some of the colors in from the top. I'm kind of pretending they're reflecting on this glass a little bit. Here, I'm going to draw my lines up and down. And I'm going to look at the, how the glass gets real dense here. And it makes all these beautiful shapes of color. Right there. And that's going to give me the thickness of the glass here. I'm going to go back in with some grays. And do some of those. And when I get done, I'm going to go back in with some white paint and really highlight the thickness of what happens right there to the glass. So anyway, I'll post a, fin a finished picture. When I get done with this, um, I am going to probably do some gray. And I'm gonna go on my whole thing and probably go on my whole thing and fade it out. Just go around it very lightly and then just fade it out just to make it pop from my background and just make my glass really stand out. Remember the sneakiest trick that I did here was get really white paint and wash it out with a little water, make it thin and then paint it on top of my areas. You can tell especially here where I wanted my color to be lighter so I can color on top. So if you're coloring with your white color pencil and you're thinking I can't get what she got, Remember, that's how I kind of cheated a little bit and I got that area like that. So think about that. Um, I used red, which is a super intense color. If you're scared of those intense colors showing right through, which is part of the beauty of the project, so I hope you're not scared. When you start print making, think of lighter colors and put a little whites in all your colors if you want and tone them down. Um, or when you print, use less ink a little bit. It'll look patchy like this with less ink, but it might still be okay. So think about the color you use, think about the colors you mix. Um, just look here, I had white and black and gray in this one. This one had yellow in it when I printed this spoon right here. 
So um, I did that on purpose. You can see different kind of prints. I did this one right here with uh, the red and the yellow. Can you see that? Am I in the right spot? There you go. The red and the yellow. This one I did a bunch of orange with yellow in it. And there it is. So think about it. Get creative. I'm not going to finish this one because it was just a step that I wanted to show you. I'm going to try to finish this one and have that picture for you guys to see. Um, so have fun. Um, guys, honestly, a drawing like this should probably take you at least a good week. So you can have all that fine detail of a great drawing on top of these. If you don't have a great vivid uh, drawing on top of these, then your print kind of makes everything get lost with it. You want a combination of great printing with great drawing. Have fun, guys. Thank you.